Roll for Crit presents How to Play the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth in five minutes or less or more door. Journeys in Middle Earth is the co-op game of exploration and combat in the world of Lord of the Rings, designed by Nathan Hadjack and Grace Holdinghouse and published by Fantasy Flight Games. Journeys in Middle Earth is a campaign game played over a series of adventures using a combination of physical components and a digital app. Each player will select a hero along with their hero figure, card, and starting items. You'll also have a skill deck, which is made up of various skill cards, some basic skills, and some specific to your chosen character or role, which you'll decide on before the game starts. It will also contain one weakness card, which has no effect other than to water down your deck. Your starting skill card begins in its prepared state, face up in front of you, while the rest of your skill cards are shuffled into a face down deck. When all players are ready, the app will provide you with story context and instruct you as to how you should set up the map with tiles and tokens and where to place your heroes. Your objectives in each adventure will differ, often asking you to defeat certain enemies or discover certain locations, but the basic rules will remain consistent. There are three phases in each round of the game, action, shadow, and rally. In the action phase, each player uses their hero to perform up to two actions. They can take their turns in any order they wish, but one player must complete all of their actions before another player proceeds. The first action we'll cover is the travel action. Each map tile is made up of multiple spaces separated by gray borders. Any two bordering spaces separated by a gray line are considered adjacent, while spaces with black borders are not. When traveling, you can move up to two times into adjacent spaces, and you don't need to use your second movement immediately after the first. If you want, you can split your travel action up by moving, taking an entirely separate action, then moving again to end your turn. Map tiles featuring exploration tokens are considered unexplored. As soon as a hero moves into a space on this map tile for the first time, they explore it by selecting the matching exploration tile from within the app. Often this will result in new map tiles and or tokens being added. Then you receive the exploration tile and flip it over, converting it into an inspiration token for use by your hero later on. Exploring occurs automatically during travel and it does not count as a separate action. In addition to exploration tiles, there may also be search tokens, person tokens, or threat tokens in various spots on the map. These will represent various things and allow you to take the interact action. To interact, you must first be in the same space as the relevant token. Then, select the token in that space in the app and follow the instructions. This could entail talking to a new character or discovering a new item. It's worth noting that you're free to select token icons in the app whenever you want to get an idea of what they represent. It's the button with an arrow symbol at the front of it that triggers the interact action, which can only be done from within that token space on your turn and can't be reversed once initiated. Now, your hero figures won't be alone on the map as there will also be enemy figures in various locations. Enemies move in groups that consist of one or more figures, often accompanied by banners to help you differentiate between groups of the same enemy type. Elite enemies have elite banners and come with super strong abilities. You can take the attack action to engage an enemy group in combat. To do so, you'll first need to choose one of your item cards with a stat icon in the corner to make an attack with. If it's a ranged item, as indicated by the range symbol in the opposite corner, you can attack from an adjacent space or the same space as the enemy. Non-ranged items will limit you to attacking from that same space. To make the attack, you'll perform what is called a test. Tests are an important concept in Journeys in Middle-Earth that will come into play frequently. A test will always correspond to one of the five stat types, agility, might, spirit, wisdom, and wit. Each hero has a value associated with each of those stats on their hero card, indicating how proficient they are in each. To perform a test, draw a number of cards from your skill deck equal to the value of the stat being tested. For example, if Bilbo is testing his agility, he'll draw three cards from his skill deck. Some skill cards have success icons in the upper left corner. These are what you're hoping to draw. Some tests will require you to draw a certain number of successes in order to pass, while others will have you enter in your success number without telling you the requirements. Some tests will require one or more heroes to attempt them multiple times, adding up their individual successes over multiple turns before completing the given task. Some skill cards will have fate icons on them. These don't count as successes. However, if you have inspiration tokens that you received exploring or some other way, you can spend one of these tokens to turn a fate icon into a success icon for the purposes of the test. Each hero is limited to carrying a certain number of fate tokens at one time. 
So now that you understand how tests work, we can get back to attacking. An attack test is performed just like a regular test, wherein the stat you're using is the stat of the relevant item card. If the item has multiple stats, you must choose one. Attack tests don't have a requirement for number of successes. Instead, any successes you draw can be used to carry out various effects as indicated on that item card. If you have multiple successes, you can carry out multiple effects, but each one can only be used once per combat. If two items share the same stat, you can dual wield them both during the same attack and choose which abilities to resolve from either. Typically, you'll be dealing damage to the enemy. To do so, select the appropriate enemy in the app and input the amount of damage dealt. Some items or abilities will give your attack modifiers with various effects, which should also be selected at this time. Some enemies have armor or sorcery, which absorb damage before it's applied to the enemy itself. If an enemy's health is lowered to zero, they are defeated, and their figure will be removed from the board. Groups with multiple enemies will have to be taken out one at a time in most cases. If they weren't defeated, they'll recover any armor or sorcery they had and make a counterattack, assuming they're within range of the attacker as some enemies may or may not have ranged capabilities. The app will inform you as to what the effects of the attack are. Typically, the hero will take either damage, fear, or both. Damage and fear are represented by damage and fear cards, which are very dangerous to heroes. For each one you receive, draw one card of the appropriate type and place it face up in front of you. Sometimes these cards will have harmful effects, while others might simply be turned face down and kept in front of you until later. Some effects will result in a damage or fear card being dealt face down, in which case it isn't revealed at all. After fully resolving one damage or fear card, proceed to draw another until you've fulfilled the effects of the attack completely. Sometimes an attack or negative effect that inflicts damage and or fear will also include a message about negating those things with the use of one of your stats, such as might or agility. In this case, you can perform a test using the relevant stat before taking those cards. For each success drawn during this test, you can safely ignore one point of fear or damage, your choice if both are on the table. Each hero has a fear and damage limit. If their cards of that type meet or exceed their limit, they'll have to perform what is called a last stand. This is a test that the app will walk you through, and if failed, that hero is defeated, and the adventure is lost unless the rest of the group can complete the objective before the end of that round. If you want to interact with a token in a space with an enemy, or just leave a space that you share with an enemy, you have to provoke them. This means that you press the Provoke button in the app for the relevant enemy and resolve an attack against your hero. After that, you're free to move or take your interact action. Any enemies that attack or counterattack during the round become exhausted. Exhausted enemies can't attack or be provoked until they become readied again via the app at the end of the shadow phase, with the exception of elite enemies who can still counterattack even if exhausted. During the action phase, your prepared skill cards can also be of use. Skill cards have special attributes that are only relevant while that card is prepared face up in your play area. You can only have a max of four prepared cards at a time, so you'll have to choose one to discard and replace if you want another. Here are just a few common card effects and keywords to be aware of. Scout. This is how you prepare cards, by drawing the number indicated from your deck, choosing one to prepare, and placing the rest on the top or bottom of the skill deck, your choice, in any order. Strike. Discard this card to add its number value to an attack. Guard. Discard this card to prevent that much damage or fear. Sprint. Discard to move that many additional spaces. Rest. Discard to remove that number of fear or damage cards you already have. Some cards will let you take boon cards, such as Hidden, which provide more benefits. Some skills or items give you attack modifiers such as Pierce, which lets you ignore enemy armor, Cleave, which lets you hit multiple enemies for the same amount of damage at once, or Stun, which exhausts the enemy. Some items are trinkets, which can be used a number of times each adventure depending on how many depletion tokens it has. If any card uses the word nearby, that describes when two different game components share a space or two adjacent spaces. When in doubt, read the cards and have a reference handy. So, players take their turns one at a time either traveling, interacting, or attacking. These actions can be done in any order and can be repeated during a player's turn if they'd like. Once everyone is finished, hit the hourglass symbol on the app and the shadow phase begins. During this phase, the app will activate each enemy group on the board one at a time. They'll attempt to move toward the indicated hero via the shortest available path until they're in range of them. If the named hero is too far away, but another hero is closer, they'll move toward that hero instead. Once in range, they'll attack and inflict damage or fear. However, if it would be impossible for the enemy to get within range of any hero when activated, select the No Target option, and they'll do something else instead. 
Some adventures will feature darkness. After all enemies have activated, if any heroes are in a space with a darkness icon or token, they'll take some amount of fear. After that comes the threat step, during which threat increases as indicated by the threat bar. Threat goes up by two points for each hero, one point for each threat token on the map, and one point for each unexplored tile. If threat reaches certain thresholds, harmful events will occur, and if the bar fills up, the game is lost. Next, all exhausted enemies become readied again. Finally, it's time for the rally phase. All players reshuffle their decks and discard piles together, then they get to scout two to prepare a new card. After all players finish scouting, a new round begins with the action phase again. If you manage to complete all of the adventure's objectives in time and without any hero being defeated, you win. But win or lose, you'll still proceed to the next adventure when it's over. In between adventures, you'll have the opportunity to advance your heroes with upgraded items and new skills according to the experience and lore you earned previously. Some adventures will make use of the battle map tile as opposed to the regular map tiles. All the normal rules apply here, but now you'll have terrain tokens in play. Terrain may slow you down or give you new opportunities depending on its type and the adventure in question. You can save your game in between adventures or continue progressing until you reach the end of the campaign. In conclusion, explore, discover, fight, adventure! That's Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle-Earth in a nutshell. Did you get all of that?